Hi again, this is Paula Clark from Keller Williams Valley Realty. And I'm here with Michael Corrick from Charles Gruen. He's a real estate attorney, one I highly recommend. And the last call we had, we talked about attorney review and what it means. We do real estate here in the state of New Jersey. And it's uh, very different from many other states. And the way we do it here is we go into an attorney review period, which is was just discussed in our last Zoom call. And today we're gonna talk about after that's over, we enter uh, being under contract and what does that mean and how does that happen uh, when we are in contract with purchasing a home? So Michael? Yes, thank you for the kind words, Paula. So when you're under contract on a residential real estate transaction, essentially what that means is you've completed the attorney review process and both sides have declared that attorney review has concluded. Once you're now under contract, that is the timeline that you go by and when all of your contingencies start to run. What are your contingencies? You have an inspection contingency. Most commonly, approximately 10 to 14 days to conduct all your inspections. You have a mortgage contingency, assuming now, that you are getting a mortgage. Let me just interrupt a minute. The inspections, do they have 10 days from the end of attorney review? Yes. So all have deadlines their inspection, get their inspection, reply to their inspection requests. That can be negotiated, but how we tend to do it and what we see a lot of out there is you have from the conclusion of attorney review, that's when all your deadlines run. So your inspection deadline, we would say, for instance, 14 days to complete your inspect all your inspections from the conclusion of attorney review and to exchange your reports and uh, repair or credit requests with the other side. So the two contingencies, and, and I want to make this clear for everybody, is that you have usually a mortgage conting contingency, which is usually um, uh, meaning that you have to have a commitment that everything is in process with your mortgage and that the mortgage paperwork is in and going through and you will be able to, they will be able to finance this home. And you get that within 30 to 45 days. Typically, yes, that, that's most common. About, right. So the other contingency is the inspection contingency, if there is that in the contract, which again, they have an inspection and then whatever they want repairs or if there's anything major, just uh, explain that a little bit. Sure. So the way the inspection contingency works is, like we said in our hypothetical, you have 14 days to conduct all your inspections. At that point, you'll get a report. There's something in that report that you don't like. Uh, for instance, there's a foundation uh, crack or um, a sewer leak, something to that effect. You would review the report with your attorney, uh, advise them of your concerns, and your attorney would request that in the form of a letter um, along with the inspection report to be sent to the other side. In this case, it would be the seller's attorney, along with a list of repairs and demands. Um, the repair can be made by the seller or a credit can be given. And most commonly, depending on who the seller is, if it's a major repair, uh, it's given in the form of a credit because a lot of times sellers just don't want to get involved with hiring different contractors or vendors. A lot of times if it's something small, then uh, oftentimes they'll hire they, somebody to fix it. And, and again, that's subjective. So uh, many times what we do is uh, we get an estimate for a come from a company that really knows, uh, you know, has more information about that problem because inspectors don't always know exact the, exactly the way a roof works, exactly the way the plumbing works, or, you know, so you get a professional to go in and further assess to see what number are we talking about in terms of a credit. And, that, and that's correct, because you want to make sure that if there is a credit negotiated, you want to be sure that that credit is sufficient to cover the repair. Yes. Somebody might say, oh, yeah, by eyeballing it, that's only a $1,500 repair. But when you call in your professional who's licensed, they're going to say, oh, no, that's going to require A, B, and C and yeah. give you a real realistic estimate that might be significantly more than that. So it's important and, to get that estimate. 
exactly. And, and, and just for anybody watching this, I wanna make it clear that you do have these contingencies, but it's really important to have a realtor that has your back, um, an attorney that has your back, that knows how to negotiate to get you the most of what you deserve. And sometimes it doesn't go our way and you have a choice of either backing out of that contract or going forward and eating it, it depends. But you know, we're always here very um, objectively looking at what's best for you. And that's exactly right. Sometimes you'll do your inspection report and you'll see that there's just too many things wrong with this house and it's just not gonna work. It looks great on paper, it looks great in pictures, but when you get that inspector in there and you get your estimates, you realize it's just not viable. You have an inspection contingency and that's how you can get out of the contract and you can always find another house. Right. And, and a lot of people make the mistake, you know, I know this is not talking about inspections, but because it's one of the contingencies that you have while in contract, um, it is the one thing that is the biggest major besides the mortgage in terms of negotiating. And um, understand that when you look at a home, you see it for what it is. And an inspection really is for things you don't see. Like, you know, you saw that the walkway was, um, you know, some of the pavers were lifted or there were tiles in the kitchen that were cracked. Those are aesthetics that you saw. The inspector is really there to see major issues and also to explain to you what the workings of the home is. How does it work? What do you have to do? Do you have to, is it a furnace system or a boiler system where you have to bleed it? Is it forced hot air? I mean, they explain a lot of things that, especially if you're a first homeowner, you may not know these things about your home. Um, but the, and then there's also the contingency of you selling a house. So you're watching all of that. Michael, the one question I'm going to ask, um, and, and you can explain too, I know we work well together because we have a system and we follow up on everything that has to go with each transaction. And we're dealing with 30, well, I'm dealing with 30 at a time. You might be dealing with a hundred at a time. Right. And I always, it always baffles me how well you um, navigate through all of the, you know, through every transaction to make sure that everybody is on track so that they can get to the closing because that's your ultimate goal is getting to the closing, right? That's correct. So that's how, correct. you know, I, I, I have a great team and as you know, and, you know, we're very systematized and we know exactly what everybody's job is to do within the team. You have a great assistant as well. I have two fantastic you have assistants. two great assistants. Yes. Um, and, and they and, help us all keep and, every, and, on top of everything, every transaction, so that we know. And we, we have a system. We have an order, basically a checklist by which we do things so that we know that when we get to attorney review what needs to get done. When we get out of contract, we know what needs to get done. We, right. we have to order title, we order title. We know when the closing date is coming up if we represent the sellers, then we have to prepare the closing documents to get them approved by the title company. We know There's when- so many factors. We can There's go so on many and, steps. Right, and it, it's mind boggling. Um, but the main important thing is, and this is why I always recommend you, is because of communication. Communication is key. People want to know what's happening. We need to keep on top of it. So we're constantly calling our clients. Okay, this is the next step. This is the next step. Because we do this every day. So it's easy for us. But a, a new buyer, a new seller, a new, you know, even a buyer buying something for the fifth time, things are changing all the time. So we have to keep in communication so they know what is the next step going forward. That's right. And I give out my cell phone number to all our clients. They reach me weekends, nights. And that's they, another great thing. They're always in touch with me. I, I always answer the phone I because I, look, I was a first time home buyer once. And I remember how it felt. Even I was an attorney at the time uh, when I had a question on a Saturday night and we needed to make an immediate decision. And I didn't know who to ask. Luckily, I did know another attorney, not the attorney that was representing me on my first purchase, but another attorney that I could reach out to. 
on a late on a Saturday night to try and get that answer. So um, I've been there. I, I understand. Tell you, I remember a story. And this is true. I think it was last summer, and we had one of those um, moments where our buyer needed an answer. I mean, it was huge. And it was a Saturday, you were on vacation and you were getting on the water slide and you answered the phone. Yes. yes. But I, I, and I will say, wow. But I will say that's why you're the man. Thank I, you, yeah. You know, because uh, I, I, I don't I do my best that of everyone, but it just shows how devoted you are and how much you care. And, you know, I don't look at it as I work 24 seven, but I don't because I enjoy what I do. And I think that says the same for you. Absolutely right. Um, I, I like helping first time home buyers, but I also like helping sellers because it, it, it's a fun process. I mean, at least it's fun for me. I've been doing it enough that uh, I actually enjoy it. And it, every particular, no two deals are alike. Everyone is a, uh, completely and no two unique people situation. Are alike. And, and it's important to be able to talk to uh, uh, to your clients in the way they understand and and the in and, and what they you know how they perceive things and being very patient with their questions because there are a lot of questions. Absolutely. We do a lot of hand holding and that's perfectly fine. It comes yeah. with the territory. Yeah. Uh, you hire a professional to help you and you lean on that professional when you have when you need guidance. And, and, that. and that's really what you hire a good realtor to do for you. And that's why you hire an attorney that knows what they're doing. And that's why our team works. That's it right. really does. Well, thank you, Michael, for um, for explaining all of that. Uh, there's so many factors to buying and selling a home. And it's really important that you have the right team in place to make that happen. Thanks Absolutely. so much. I definitely okay. agree. Bye. Thank you.